Okay guys, welcome back to a, another video with uh, me, Eric. Um, we're going to go over uh, some uh, mean electrical axis and how to calculate it. Um, a lot of uh, physiology classes, when you guys do cardiac physiology, uh, whether that's in medical school, graduate school, or undergraduate school, um, I almost guarantee you that you're going to have uh, questions or lectures on how to calculate the mean electrical axis in the heart. Now, the uh, mean electrical axis can be used for a lot of things um, clinically uh, as far as for uh, giving you an idea of whether or not the heart is, um, you know, functioning as it should be uh, from an electrophysiology standpoint as well as hypertension or uh, things like that. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So um, to calculate electrical axis, what I like to do is I am a pretty straightforward person when it comes to this. I draw it out. Every question I always draw. Um, and you'll need to memorize um, the Eindhoven's triangle, and this is the, the circle of degrees um, that is a, taken from Eindhoven's triangle. So we see that um, lead 1 is here going from left to right. If it's positive, then it's on the right. If it's negative, it's on the left. So that's kind of what this arrow up for 1, down for 1, positive, negative. So AVF, remember if it's um, positive, it's going to be pointed towards the feet. If it's negative, it's going to be pointed towards um, the ceiling. Same thing with two, uh, AVR, AVL, and uh, leads three. Um, so just make sure you're paying attention and you know which directions those go um, with positive, negative deflections. Um, we talk about that in my other video, Easy EKG, um, going over Eindhoven's triangle. Um, so. Without further ado, let's just walk through about how we're going to figure out the electrical axis in this heart. And I'll show you the, the tips and tricks that I use uh, on my clinical uh, rotations right now that help me figure out what's going on. So um, here we go. So here's your EKG. Okay, so we have over on the right side here, uh, it's a 12 lead, so you don't need to worry about V1 through V6. These are the precordial leads that um, we're not going to talk about today. If you want to learn more about them, I have another video uh, that's Easy EKG 12 Leads. Um, you can see that in the info. We're focusing on leads 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF. Okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I calculate it right off the bat. So let's see here. I can either look at lead 1 or lead AVF. I'm going to go with lead 1. So is lead 1 positive or negative? What do you think? So lead one looks positive, right? Because the deflection of the QRS is up and it's not down. Down, if you look at AVR, this is a good example of being a negative deflection. See how that's negative? We're looking at the positive deflection. So we know one is positive. So we're going to go over here to our lovely little Eindhoven's triangle. And now we know that because it's positive, that it is going to be, our axis is going to be on the right side of this circle of degrees. So what I'm doing is I'm pasting in these little half circles on the area. I always shade in the areas of the circle that are not the area where the axis is going to be. Okay. So since we have a positive deflection, if we go back to our EKG, since it's positive in one, we know that it has to be on this side. Okay. So we're going to shade out everything over here. So it cannot be anywhere from positive 90 to negative 90, okay? Cannot, just phys physiologically impossible. Now I should make note that a normal axis is anywhere from negative 30 to around 110 to 120, so anywhere from this area here. Okay, so now we know that um, we're on the right side. So let's find out where we're gonna do next. So the next lead I like to go to is AVF, okay? So let's go back. AVF. So is AVF positive or negative, do you think? So AVF, to me, looks positive, right? The major deflection is up, so we know that's a positive deflection. So now we're going to go back here, and I'm going to paste another one of these little half circles. And now I need to put it right there. So now because AVF, so here's AVF right here, running up and down. Since AVF is positive and positive points towards the feet, we know that it's pointing down towards the feet. So that eliminates this area up here. Everything over here it eliminates. 
And because we know that AV, or I'm sorry, that lead 1 is positive, it eliminated everything on this side, right? So now we're left with a 25% area of where our mean electrical axis could be, which is good. Right now, when we're in clinic, this is all we look at. We look at lead 1, and we look at lead AVF. If they're both positive, we know we have a normal axis of the heart, which is great. Let's go back and find out what more specifically our axis is. Let's look at, how about lead 3? Do you think lead 3 is positive or is lead 3 negative? So this is, it gets kind of tricky sometimes. It looks, it's positive and there's a little bit of negative and so you want to take the difference between the two and if you do that you come out and it looks more positive to me. So let's go back to our chart and if lead 3, which is here, if lead 3 is positive, then we know that it is going to be in these two areas down here. So I'm going to paste another one. And I'll get rid of that up here. Okay, so remember here's a lead 3 up here. Lead 3 is negative up top, positive down here. So since it's positive, we know it's going to be on this side of the circle, right? So now that eliminates just this one little cube here. So now we know our axis is anywhere from positive 30 to positive 90, which is great. We're, we're narrowing it in. Let's go back and look at another one. How about let's do AV. We know that AVR won't tell us anything. So let's look at lead 2, whether lead 2 is positive or lead 2. No, let's not do lead 2. Let's do... Let's just go through and do another one. Let's don't not we'll not guess the game here. So we did lead one, we did AVF, we did lead three. Let's do AVL. AVL is also positive. No, let's do a negative one. How about that? Let's do AVR. So AVR is negative. We already talked about that. So let's go back here. And I'll paste another one. So remember here's AVR right here. It's negative. When we get to the left. I'm sorry, the uh, bottom of the heart, positive when we get to the right arm. Okay, so since it was negative, we know that it is going to be on this side, right? But we already knew that. But we're going to put it anyway. Because remember, since it's positive, it's going to be on this side over here. And it can't be over here. Right? So let's do AVL. How about that? AVL is positive, right? So let's go back to our chart. We'll paste another one. Now here's AVL, positive on the left arm, negative on the, the bottom of the heart. So let's rotate it. Remember it was positive. So we know that it's going to be on this side of the body, right? This side of our circle. So now um, we're able to eliminate, I'm sorry, I put this in backwards, oops. Oh, now I'm just moving everything around here. There we go. So since remember AVL is positive, it's going to be on this side of the heart, right? So we look down here, and now we have our axis is anywhere from positive 60 to positive 30 degrees, which is normal. Now you can get more specific if you um, do absolute vector analysis, which we talked about in my Easy EKG uh, original video, but uh, most of your physiology classes are not going to ask you to do that. So um, Let's go over that real quick again. The easiest way to find where your axis is, check lead 1 and lead AVF. If lead 1 is positive, then we're going to be on the right side of this circle. Then we look at AVF. If AVF is positive, that means we're going to be on the bottom part of the circle. So that means we only have 25% of an area to work with, which is great. That's normal. Then when you get more specific, that's when we go down here to what I did in the circle. We did this earlier. We want to narrow out which areas of the heart cannot be 
based on the vectors. And we do that by shading in the areas that are not where the area is going to be. And what is left is where we think our axis is going to be. So positive 60 to positive 30. So that's great. I uh, hope this video has helped you. It's a difficult subject. It's kind of hard to document and uh, to, to teach. So I hope this helped walk you through it. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, shoot me an email. And uh, I'll do what I can to help you guys out. Thanks.